This is the a7S III. In short, this camera is amazing, and if you have $3,500 and are looking to buy a video-centric mirrorless camera, this should be on your list. Doing a review of the a7 III feels a little weird because there's really no other camera that is this well-rounded for video in this price point at this time. Sony has made a ton of changes to the video settings of this camera, and they have almost eliminated the nasty color issues we've dealt with in the past. Several people have already done exhaustive reviews of the a7S III, so in this video, I want to focus more on image quality and dive in and see what Sony has changed rather than cover every single spec and new feature on this camera because you've probably already seen those videos. I only had the camera for about a week, so I really wanted to focus on how Sony has improved the color science, how does 10-bit perform on this camera, how good is low light compared to the a7 three and really take the camera out and film with it and see what it's all about because for the first time in a long time sony has changed so much about their color how log is being captured on this camera etc before we get to all of that goodness let's do a 15 second recap of the a7s3 specs for those who've been living under a rock it has a 12 megapixel full frame sensor in body stabilization improved dynamic range improved rolling shutter performance 4k up to 120 hd up to 240 422 10-bit internal no crop and great autofocus in all modes multiple data rates and compression options flip out screen full hd HDMI, dual card slots with two card types, improved menu system, and more. Now let's talk about image quality on the A7S III. Now my number one issue with Sony cameras up to this point has always been the lack of 8-bit, low data rates, and the way the image just falls apart and looks awful when you grade the footage. And I'm thrilled to say that Sony has pretty much fixed every one of those issues in the a7S III. So let's take a look at the picture profiles, starting with picture profiles turned off. This is a setting I've recommended for years if you need a no-fuss, decent image out of the camera and don't want to make corrections or grade your footage in post. If we compare the a7S III to the older A7 III, we can immediately see a few changes. First, the gamma curve seems to have been altered slightly. You can see this by looking at my head. It almost looks like the A7 III footage has a fill light off to the right side of my face, whereas the A7S III has kind of a different ratio between the bright and dark parts of my face. The color is also slightly different with the A7 III being a little more pink, but the real difference between these cameras becomes apparent when we take a look at the log profiles. Starting with S-Log2, you can immediately see a color difference. The A7S is much more neutral, while the A7 shows the dreaded magenta shift, even though I performed a custom white balance on both cameras, and both of them gave me the same white balance setting. I also found that the A7S III was a little darker in all log modes, which was interesting. Next, let's put the official Sony S-Log2 LUT on both cameras, and bam, holy magenta, that is awful on the A7 III. This may look like a white balance issue, but in fact, it is the low data rate 8-bit color out of this camera. For more information on that, watch my recent video about fixing Sony color. Meanwhile, the A7S is looking great with good color straight off of that Sony LUT. The same story can be seen with S-Log3, although skin tones are a little more green before corrections. So what has changed here? The first and biggest change to the A7S III is that Sony finally has implemented 10-bit 422 in camera. Previously, we have always had to deal with 8-bit, which hasn't been the greatest on Sony cameras. To show you the difference, look closely at the footage blown up to 400%, and you can see the A7's 8-bit footage has what looks like magenta noise, but the A7S III at the same crop shows almost none. If we switch the A7S from 10-bit to 8-bit, the same nasty 8-bit magenta blocks come back, although 8-bit on the A7S III seems to be slightly better than 8-bit on the a a7 III. While the A7S III has massively improved in the color department, there still seems to be some of that blotchiness, which is unfortunate. If we do a side-by-side -side with my Panasonic S1, you can see that the image is very clean and even. You can clearly make out the neutral gray on that back wall, whereas the A7S III still has some of that magenta spotting happening. And of course, this issue runs rampant on the A7S III. At this point, a lot of you are probably thinking, Caleb, nobody cares about weird little purpley noise bits in the corner of your image at 400% and you'd be right. 
But the problem is that little magenta issue is across the entire image, which means if you tried to correct it by going toward green, you're going to have areas that were neutral or gray or white start to take on green. And it's just a battle as you go back and forth. This was a horrible issue on previous Sony cameras. Luckily, Sony has almost completely eliminated on the A7S III, but there's still a little bit of that going on when you compare it to a camera like Panasonic's. So while I'm thrilled to see massive improvement here, I'd love to see this issue completely disappear someday on Sony cameras. Along with the 10-bit options on the A7S, we also have, for the first time in a long time, larger data rates and different compression options. You can choose the traditional XAVC-S, or new XAVC-HS and XAVC-SI, which have higher data rates. So far, I have found the XAVC-SI to be a great way to go on this camera. Very easy to grade and edit, and it has juicier, nice, higher data rates, which is always helpful when you're trying to grade your footage. And finally, Sony has updated the color science on the A7S III. I couldn't really find any information online about what they changed, but clearly the footage grades much better, and when you just take a look at something like no picture profile on both cameras, you can clearly see a difference. So Sony has done some tweaking. From the footage I have filmed, it looks like they took a lot of the magentas and reds and shifted them closer to yellow or the skin tone line. To wrap up this section on color, I would say this is by far the best Sony camera when it comes to shooting video and getting great color out of the camera if you're not shooting a cinema camera. So for the first time in a long time, we're seeing new stuff and specs when it comes to color in a mirrorless camera from Sony. Now let's move on to low light, and I actually did extensive testing between the a7S III and the Sony a7 III, and I was really surprised by how well the a7 III did. Obviously, the a7S III has much better dynamic range at different ISO values, but if all you look at is noise, the a7 III holds up well against the a7S III, even at higher ISO levels. I also found it really hard to compare these cameras as the a7 III has more resolution, which is going to shrink the noise down and make it appear better or cleaner. One area where the A7S III shines, though, is how clean the lines and edges are. If we zoom in on the color chart, you can see how sharp and clear each color chip is on the A7S III. The same chart on the A7 III appears smudged around the edges, and I actually thought I was out of focus when filming this test, but after multiple reshoots, I found the results to be the same. So if you thought low light on the A7S would completely crush its older a7 III brother, you'll be disappointed. This test really goes to show how good Sony's 24 megapixel sensor is. Now let's talk about slow motion. High frame rate filming on the a7S III is incredible. I mean, come on, look at this 4K 120 frame per second clip shot in 422 10-bit log with stabilization, with great autofocus and audio if you need it. There is a slight 1.1 crop when filming in 4K at 120, but I think I can find it in my heart to forgive Sony for this. So slow motion, footage, color, the stabilization, the lack of rolling shutter, great autofocus, a flip out screen, awesome buttons and controls. I mean, it's hard to not like this camera, but there are a few tiny things to keep in mind if you're looking at purchasing an A7S III. Now, these cons I'm about to go over are very minuscule, but I do wanna bring them up because there are things to think about. Number one is going to be resolution. Now, when you compare this camera to the older A7 III and other 6K cameras that are downscaling into capturing 4K, you're definitely going to notice a difference, especially if you slightly blow up your footage a lot and do lots of reframing. This camera's not going to hold up as well, but I will say the quality of those pixels is great. Like we looked at with low light, everything just looks really crisp and clean. It's just at a lower resolution. Along with resolution is the fact that you cannot shoot in Super 35 or a crop mode on this camera in 4K. The only way you can use, you know, non full frame lenses or APS-C lenses is to shoot in HD and turn on S35 crop mode. So if you have a great collection of lenses that are not full frame, you're stuck with HD on this camera, whereas other cameras have enough resolution to crop in and still give you 4K. And finally, I know we've already talked about it, but there's still a little bit of that funky magenta stuff going on. 
on this camera when you compare it to other options available. So if you're looking for the cleanest image when it comes to color and what's gray is gray and what's white is white, this camera isn't quite there, but it's really, really good, especially when you compare it to previous options from Sony. So at the end of the day, while I've only had a week with this loner camera, I am thrilled with the A7S III. I can't wait for my pre-ordered model to arrive and we'll definitely be doing more videos here on the channel. So make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already. That's gonna do it for me in this review. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we will see you in the next video.